boys and girls from Life Center PH King Street, South Carolina, all kids from around the world. Welcome to today's Children's Church lesson. I'm so excited to be here with you all today with this lesson because it's been a couple of weeks since we've had a new lesson on Sunday because we had the water baptism and then we had um, some special singers at our church last week. So we didn't meet for Children's Church on that Sunday. So I'm really excited about this lesson. We are continuing in our road trip through the New Testament. Who can tell me where we stopped the last time? Pause the video and tell me. Okay, if you said 2 Timothy, you are correct. Okay, we are done with 2 Timothy. So who can tell me what goes after 2 Timothy? What book in the New Testament? It starts with a T. Yes, it is Titus. Okay, and there's not a first and second. Titus is just Titus. And Titus has five letters, T-I-T-U-S. Spell that with me, T-I-T-U-S, T-I-T-U-S, Titus, Titus, Titus. It goes right after 2 Timothy. It's a fairly easy word to remember how to spell and to say, unlike some other books in the Bible, they're not all easy to spell and they're not all easy to say. But Titus, that's easy, right? Aren't you glad? All right, so let's go ahead and say the books of the New Testament together. Are you ready? Starting with Matthew, and we will stop with Titus. Ready? On your mark, get set, go. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, 1 and 2 Timothy, Titus. Let's do it again. One, two, ready, go. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, 1 and 2 Timothy, Titus. Very good. All right, so do you know who wrote Titus? Guess. Who do you think? Paul. Paul wrote another book in the Bible. But do you know Titus is another letter that Paul wrote? Yes, Paul wrote a lot of letters. If you haven't noticed as we've been going through the road trip through the New Testament, he wrote a lot of letters. And in those letters, he put important things. Do you ever write a letter to anybody, like to your grandma or to a friend? We used to have what we called pen pals in school, and we would write letters to people across the country, or maybe sometimes even in other countries, and we would tell them things about ourselves. But if I wrote my grandma, I always like to tell her all the big things that were happening to me. So that's what Titus, or Paul, in Titus was talking about. He was talking about some really important things that were happening and things that should be happening in the church. And the first thing he started talking about in Titus 1 was the elders in the church. Do you know what the word elder means? Elder means an elderly person, an older person. So he started teaching the people and in his letter, he started talking about what the elders in the church should do and how they should act. Okay, so he was talking about the godly characteristics of how an older person should act and what they should do. And then the elderly people are to show us by example and they're to teach people like me and people like you. They're supposed to teach us how to act. And we're supposed to follow their example. How many of you have somebody at school that doesn't behave all the time? They kind of act up in class. And sometimes you catch yourself copying them, playing copycat. Okay, thank you for your honest answers. I think we've all done that. We have all copied somebody who was not doing something they were supposed to do, not really realizing or maybe not even paying attention. But that's what this book is trying to tell us and to teach us. So today, you're going to use the word no, my big word, no, spell no, N-O, okay? Sometimes we say no to things, okay? And I want you to learn how to say no to ungodly things. So my big point is I will say no to ungodly things. Paul, in this book, is trying to teach everybody at all ages how to to be godly. Does that mean I'm going to be God? No. He wants us to act in a right way, in a good way that will be pleasing to God. He wants us to make God proud of our actions. When we say no to our parents, do you think that God makes God proud? No. 
If we say no to our teachers, does that make God proud? No, but there are some things that makes God proud. So listen carefully, because I'm going to read to you Titus chapter 2, verses 11 through 14. Pause the video and find the scripture. Titus 2, 11 through 14. Go ahead and pause it. All right, so now that you're back, let's go ahead and read it. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no, N-O, no, to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. While we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior Christ Jesus, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness, that means all bad things, and to purify himself a people that are very are his very own and eager to do what is good. He wants us to be people who are eager to want to do good. So he wants us to say, I will say no to ungodly things. He wants us to say yes to godly things. Now let's talk about that. What is godliness? What does that mean? Let's list some things. What about being kind? When other people are being rude, let's turn that and let's be kind. Let's talk about how we talk using our words. If we're getting frustrated and we talk out of anger and we say mean things, that's not godly. So we have to be kind with our words. We have to use gentle words. The Bible says we are to always be gentle. And that's not always easy, especially if somebody around you is not doing the right thing, when you have to choose to do right or choose to do wrong, right? Okay, we have to be brave. Another godly character is we have to be bold and brave. We have to be able to tell people about Jesus and do it in a loving way. We have to show them in our actions that we love Jesus. You see, Jesus died on the cross for our sins, not just for us, but he wants everybody in this world to know about him. So we have to do the right thing, even when somebody might make fun of us for following Jesus and for doing the right thing. They might bully you. I hope not. But they might make fun of you, but we have to do it anyway because that is a godly characteristic. Another godly characteristic is to be helpful. Help other people. Be thankful when things are hard instead of grumbling and complaining. Find something to be thankful about. Another one I started thinking about is don't be jealous. When someone gets something new and you want something new too, be happy for them. Be happy that they got something new. And tell them, I really like that. That is very nice. I'm so happy for you. Don't get upset because you know what? You will get something new another time. Another thing to do to be godly is to be obedient. Obey your parents. Obey your teachers. Obey those who are in charge or over you. Because you know what? When you obey, you will be blessed. And one day you're going to have people under you and you're going to want them to obey you. So you're going to have to lead by walking and acting in a godly way. So start acting godly. Don't follow the ungodliness of what the world does. Another godly character I started thinking about is being hospitable. Say that word, hospitable. I said a lot of words today, right? Hospitable means when somebody comes to church or somebody comes to your house, you show them, maybe when they come to your house, offer them a drink. Offer them something to eat if they're visiting. If we have a new visitor at the church, Help them to find the bathroom. Help them to know where children's church is. Introduce yourself to them. But be hospitable and say hello and be kind when, there was somebody, when there's somebody new. When there's a new friend or a new student at school, show them how to do things. Help them with whatever they need help with, right? Help them not to get lost at school. Because that's very easy to do for a new person is to get lost. Another godly characteristic that we've talked about often is to forgive. 
When somebody does something wrong to you, forgive them. Say, you know what? I know you did wrong, but I forgive you. And it's okay. I still will be kind to you anyway. Okay? Always, 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 always say, always be honest. Always tell the truth. All these things that I'm talking about are godly characteristics. God wants you to always tell the truth. Always be kind. Always be helpful. Never be jealous. Always forgive. Always be thankful. Always be gentle. Always be responsible. That's another word. Always be responsible. You know, when you have to do those chores at home, or you have to clean up at school, or you have homework to do, that's a responsible thing to do it. Always, always, always do the right thing and say no to ungodly things. And you say, how do I do that? You know how? You've got to have Jesus in your heart. There's no way to do it without having Jesus in your heart. I want to come to you and ask you right now, do you know Jesus? Is he inside of your heart? Have you asked him to be in your heart? Have you asked him to save you? If you have, I am very proud of you. But if you have not, here is how you get Jesus to be in your heart. You have to pray and you have to ask him to forgive you of your sins. And you have to say, Jesus, I know that you died on the cross for my sins. And I know that you want me to follow you. And you have to surrender your life. You have to surrender and do what he is asking you to do. Put out your hands right now. And I want you to say, I surrender my life to you, Jesus. Do that again. Say that with me. I surrender my life to you, Jesus. I surrender. Hold them up. Hold them out. But put your hands up to Jesus and say, Jesus, I will do what you want me to do. I will say yes to godly things. And I will say no to ungodly things. Say that big point with me again. I will say no to ungodly things. I will say yes to godly things. Now let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord Jesus, for today. I thank you for the word that you've given us. I thank you for the example that you have set before us. I thank you for the godly people that you have put in my life to teach me how to act and how not to act. And I pray that you will forgive me for the things that I have done that are so ungodly. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will help me to act in godly ways at all times. I pray for us to continue to stay healthy and strong and to always do the right thing. I love you, Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I love you and I will see you next time. Bye.